Hello everyone. Firstly, I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which you and I meet today and pay my respects to Elders past, present and future. Thank you for joining us today for the second in a series of the Queensland Tourism Awards Judges Webinars. These webinars are aimed to help you as an entrant through your award submission journey. My name is Liz Ward. I am the CEO and co-founder of Tourism Tribe and Navi Digital. And I'm very pleased and happy to be your MC of these sessions. I have quite a long background in history with the Queensland Tourism Awards and the National Awards in many capacities as a judge, as a mentor, and also in developing submissions um, for a business that I ran and going through the journey of being told to try harder, you're on the right track, eventually having success. Um, and it's, it was a great experience. And I love being involved with the awards because I really appreciate the wider benefits that come from the awards for businesses and for our industry. But on to today's webinar and this hot topic. Now this focus topic today for the webinar is all about the newly introduced consumer rating score to the Queensland and Australian Tourism Awards. Now when we talk about consumer ratings and online reputation, I find that this topic is such a passion point for me because I know that all the marketing in the world does not um, really help unless you've got a really healthy online reputation and so that's why it's so pleasing that this consumer perspective has been brought into the awards process and I'm very pleased to be um, speaking on that today with our special guest Avril Carter. Now let me tell you before I introduce Avril, Avril to you, um, the consumer rating score that's been introduced as part of the award submission evaluation process. Um, it is derived from Review Pro and will account for 20% of the total score available for the majority of categories, with some exceptions. Where categories have their own specific question set and the consumer ratings do not fit well with that and match what's being assessed, then no consumer review score is being incorporated. So this includes categories of ecotourism, Aborig Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander tourism and cultural tourism categories. A consumer rating score um, will also not be applied to new tourism businesses, major festivals and events, festivals and events, business event ventures and tourism marketing and campaigns. For those categories where there is a mix of products included, then the consumer rating value will only be 5%. This includes retail and higher service and food tourism. So um, you can see on screen there um, the list of some of those um, categories. Now you can find the percentage of consumer score applicable for your category at the end of the award category documents on the QTIC website. Now what we do know about um, how this is incorporated, and you're going to learn a lot more about Review Pro shortly, um, is that approximately 25 reviews must have been received across the various review and social platforms which Review Pro analyzes and aggregates data for during the qualifying period in order to receive what is called a global review index score and you'll learn more about that shortly. Um, businesses that do not have a global review index, a GRI, will receive a score of zero for the consumer rating. So to, to discuss this further and to find out more about the Review Pro product, I'm joined today by Avril Carter from Review Pro. Now Avril is a very respected member of our industry. She's the sales director for Australasia at Review Pro and is responsible for leading and developing the sales and growth of Review Pro in Australasia. Avril works with both accommodation and tourism brands to help them gain and act upon the unique insights provided via Review Pro's guest experience involvement suite. So these guys are masters of data and analytics that can help businesses. Avril has more than 20 years experience in hospitality and travel in Australia and Europe, including strategic roles at TripAdvisor, 
Orbitz Worldwide and Mandarin Oriental Hotel Group. And Avril is my go-to person for anything on review management and review management tips. She has so much experience and knowledge in this space. Um, so um, Avril, I'm going to let you take the mic in a sec, but first of all, if I could just say that I understand that the Australian Tourism Industry Council, ATIC, has partnered with Re Review Pro to work together to recognise excellence within Australian tourism based on and according to guest feedback data, which I think is great to bring that perspective in. ATIC's long-standing benchmarking system, the Quality Tourism Framework, is currently based on three pillars, accreditation, star ratings and awards. This year, for the first time, consumer re reviews will be an integral part of the system with data provided by long-standing partners Review Pro, who are world leaders in guest intelligence. So Avril, could you tell us more about this partnership and why it is important to integrate a consumer rating score into the award submission process? Thanks so much, Liz. Thanks for that introduction. Hello everyone. Uh, that's right, Review Pro and ATIC have actually been working together for a number of years and this year the addition of consumer reviews to the Quality Tourism Framework Award Program is a really exciting development. Firstly, as a brief introduction for those that aren't unfamiliar with us, Review Pro has been helping tourism improve guest experience for over a decade now. Globally, over 60,000 operators and businesses rely on Review Pro, whether they be small independent hotels, tour operators and attractions, business groups, hotel chains, um, destinations such as Tourism and Events Queensland and Tourism NT, all to measure customer sentiment across the region, or even with third party providers such as investment companies and revenue management systems, CRM solutions and the like. With the information that we collect and insights generated through our suite of solutions, we help you understand as a business and improve the guest experience across the entire guest journey. Now, ATIC recognised a long time ago that consumer sentiment plays an important part of both the consumer purchasing flow and also to managing an effective tourism business. In fact, our original partnership was formed when Review Pro was selected as a natural partner to provide a customised version of our renowned online reputation management solution to members as a practical business tool. And in addition, Review Pro has provided a consumer rating score which delivers valuable website content for some of the ATIC programs. So this new and very exciting partnership that we're talking about today is the introduction of consumer reviews to the awards program. Review Pro are providing the data in the form of an online reputation score called the Global Review Index to measure the consumer sentiment criteria. In addition, all applicants will also have their own access to the customised Review Pro dashboard as a business intelligence tool to assist tracking and analysing their online reviews all in one place. Um, the second part of your question, Liz, was around consumer rating scores and why they're important. So there's many reasons um, that it's important to integrate a consumer rating score to the award program. Consumer reviews have a direct impact on your business KPIs. Review, reviews affect rankings on review sites, search engines, and third-party distribution sites such as OTAs. Reviews also directly affect sales, revenue and conversion rates. So thus they're very reflective of business performance and excellence. As a business, encouraging and listening to your customers, recording their experience in the form of reviews is paramount to better understanding your business. So quite simply, uh, consumer rating scores provide a really valuable metric of business performance and that fits alongside the award program. So I completely agree with you. I mean, aside from coming, bringing this um, perspective of consumer sentiment 
this objectivity from your target markets and customers into the process. It's just good for business. So it's fantastic to hear that nominees are going to have transparency through this process. So I understand that nominees of the Queensland Tourism Awards have access to a free specialised version of Re Review Pro for the purposes of the, the awards. So can you tell us about what they'll have access to, please? Yeah, thanks, Liz. That's right. So as a nominee, you do have access to a free and a customised version of our famous online reputation management solution for the purposes of the awards. Our online reputation management solution is designed to enable you as a business to monitor reviews in order to better understand your guests, improve service and product, online rankings and ultimately to help you grow revenue. Um, access to this dashboard will help you in your awards process to better understand and benchmark your performance, but will also be a good day-to-day -day business tool to help you improve overall your performance across the guest journey. The guest experience journey begins, of course, when a guest is researching their trip and finishes well after they departed. It starts with researching their trip. Travellers find your business, as you know, on many different review sites different search engines and OTAs, they read what your guests have been saying about you and compare you with other businesses nearby. The experience with your business and how any negative issues have been handled will are visible for all in the reviews that previous guests have left. So Review Pro's online management reputation management solution, it empowers you to actively manage reviews to make sure that they best reflect your business. Post experience, highly recommend encouraging your guests to leave reviews, making sure that you have fresh verified reviews on all the top review sites, search engines and OTAs. In addition to that in the solution, what you'll see is a very powerful semantic analysis technology, which enables you to understand and analyse what guests say within the free text of reviews across 17 languages, and it helps you drive important business decisions that would make a difference for your guest experience and eventually, of course, revenue. A thoughtful management response also goes a really long way to boost guest satisfaction, even if the experiences were not 100% positive, and you can manage the whole process via Review Pros as well through that dashboard. I think that's great, Avril. I think for everybody who's entering the awards to have access to that dashboard, that intelligence, um, you know, the um, the benefit of all being aggregated and having that profile of that data is amazing. And you mentioned an important point about, you know, bringing in best practice. So could you share, and I know that you're great at this, any tips for first time users of Review Pro and how they can um, grow their reviews, given that that's going to be an important thing moving forward in business, but also as part of their submission process? Yeah, sure. So um, when you initially have access to Review Pro, a couple of things that I would highly recommend um, to do to familiarise yourself with the solution if you're not familiar with it already, there is a really great training video that we have provided uh, via ATIC. Uh, it's a really good to watch and it gives you all the, the very basics of access, what each of the dashboards are about, how to use the tracking, how to set up alerts and how to set up reports and so on. So I definitely recommend watching that um, available and that, that's available through uh, all the different Tourism Industry Council um, key websites like QTIC, etc. Um, the other thing that I would do to in the initial stages is set up reports and alerts so we can, using Review Pro system, you can create an alert for any new review content. So it's really easy to set up and configure. You just do it once and you can set that up to send an alert to you every time you receive a new review that from any platform. So regardless of what platform it is, you'll, you'll have an alert. And that's something that jogs your memory, uh, keeps you informed. Even though some of the review platforms have their own alert system, I'm often told by many businesses that they miss either miss sometimes or they miss some other pl really valuable platforms that they didn't realise they had a review from. So having those alerts will just keep a really good consistent ongoing reminder. 
There's also a way to schedule reports uh, to receive regular updates and analysis. So you can schedule a weekly report, monthly report, however frequently that you like to receive it, that will give you an overall overview against the aggregated data. And you can also download those at any time as well. So if you're doing a specific project like the award submission, you can go in and download those reports directly from the dashboard. The other things that I'd suggest sort of more, I guess, short term and also long term and I guess more of a holistic approach, I feel, to sharing customer feedback is that you should really share your results with your team and just keeping something to yourself in, in I'm sure you, as you know, in any aspect of business isn't that valuable. And we see from experience that clients that really use get guest feedback well are those that share all the results with their teams, the good and the bad. They, they celebrate their successes and, they, and it helps them prioritise and focus on what needs to be changed. Also think about the positives and promote what your customers love. So even though you might know it instinctively, having access to this data will give you a really good overview, especially through semantic analysis, to see what are the things that are most impacting your customers uh, and share that, promote that. And my final tip is in these times, remember that reviews still matter now more than ever. What we've seen over the last 12 to 18 months has very much been that sharing information around the new experience is really critical. Many, many people are reviewing about it and it fulfills a criteria that travellers are very keen on at the moment, which is getting some kind of reassurance when they're booking around what to expect, which in the past was important more around the general experience, but now we have seen that in these times, there's different aspects to reassurance um, that wasn't there in the past and they're looking to reviews for that. So they're, they're kind of my, my key tips yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you, Avril. And it's, um, as you say, you've got the training video up there, which people can watch as well, which they can access um, through the um, awards portal. And just confirming though, because I'm thinking about somebody who's sitting back and going, oh, I don't know if, um, you know, if I've got enough reviews or how this is going to work for me. But the good thing is that when you set up your new account via the awards portal, Review Pro will source reviews retrospectively. So just confirming that's the case across all of the feedback um, platforms that they aggregate from. Um, and that will be retrospective through the entire qualifying period of the awards, 1st of July, 2019 to 30th of July, 2021. So that sounds to be um, like a great, uh, you know, sort of process for people that is going to ensure that they've got every opportunity to have their um, their consumer score included. Would you think that's correct? Yeah, that's right. So when you have when you first get access to your information through the Review Pro portal, you will see historical review information. Uh, review Pro as a platform. We hold and always show up to three years of historical data as long as the review pro, as long as the actual platform, the review platform itself holds it for that long. So <clears throat> there are some review platforms that hold um, up to two years, but the majority hold longer than that. So you're going to have a, a good, good amount of historical data to go back and see and, and base your um, results on. Mm. And I'm thinking even somebody who's watching this webinar a couple of months prior to um, the 30th of July, they've still got time to, you know, take on board some review um, management best practice tips and generating more reviews and encouraging guests to leave reviews. That will really help them too over the next couple of months with that, um, with the reviews that are being assessed. So I think that's fantastic. But one other thing, just so we're clear, because for some people it's new, new terminology and it seems to be such an important measure that's used in the submission evaluation, is can you explain what the GRI is, the Global Review Index? What is that? Yes, exactly. Yeah, so that's quite important. So when you log into your dashboard, on the main results page, you'll see your, we call it, we shorten it to the GRI, um, classed as the Global Review Index. 
and this is an industry standard online reputation score that's developed by Review Pro, and it's derived from the review scores across the different platforms that you have received. So it's an algorithm that takes into account overall review scores. So on a very basic level, as you know, when you, someone reviews you, they give you a score. So it might they might have given you four out of five, someone else has gone onto another review platform that has a scale out of 10, then they might have given you eight out of 10 and then someone else in two weeks time gives you two out of five and so on. So what happens with our GRI is it's calculated on a daily basis or recalculated. So every time new reviews are received with scores, your GRI is going to recalculate and recalibrate based on all your new scores. So the good thing about that is that it moves and changes quite frequently and it's reflective of your more recent reviews. So within this algorithm, uh, there is uh, way different weightings and one of the weightings is around your, uh, more re your recency of reviews which is really reflective of how review sites work as you I'm sure of you many many of you know that review sites themselves and their own rankings they will usually take into account your more recent reviews uh, so that's important to know but also as a business you want your score to be more reflective of what customers have been thinking more recently and what they've been scoring you. And also remember that the whole reason for this, it's not just because we want to give you a score. Um, the reason that we calculate it is that review scores matter to guests that are going to make a booking. And how they use reviews is that they generally will look at the more recent ones and they will place more importance on more recent reviews. So you know yourself, I'm sure as a consumer, that when you're looking at reviews from any kind of product, you tend to sort of look at the more recent reviews first and you, you definitely place more importance on that. So the GRI score does move and change. So Liz, what you alluded to before, which is sure, you know, if, if you, whatever your GRI score is, if you logged in and saw it today, it could be completely different by the end of July because it will depend on, the, you know, you, you'll also have no doubt you'll have new customers between now and the end of July and the different scores that they have contributed will contribute to your GRI. So um, you can see it move and change. So you could just be on the precipice and thinking, oh, I need to increase that. Um, then maybe, uh, you know, make a concerted effort um, leading, uh, we should anyway all the time, it's best practice, um, but certainly make a concerted effort to encourage more reviews from your customers. Um, you know, you're happy guests, you see them and they're happy, um, you, you do the usual thing that I'm sure you all do, which is encourage them to write a review, um, you know, via various mechanisms that you may have to do that. Um, so the Global Review Index, it's a general sort of overview of what that is. Um, and yeah, you'll see that when you log into your Review Pro dashboard. Um, that is fantastic advice, Avril, that it's never too late get in there and um, make sure you're encouraging those reviews because of the recency as well as the quality of those reviews and the number of re reviews you have all come into play so that's really good. Um, I was just thinking before, as we wrap this up just for people to sort of they've heard a lot of information about Review Pro and how it's integrated and I suppose just to top line it again for people in terms of for the majority of, of categories and we named those that this doesn't impact at the beginning but there are a lot of categories. Um, the, for the majority of categories, the way that the scoring is structured is, yes, we still have the site visits, which is at 20%, and then it's another 100%, and of that, 20% of that 100%, it will come from um, the GRI and the Review Pro data, and then the other 80% is um, about your submission and what you write. So out of 120, it's 20%. And I think that's really good because what we're seeing then at play here is big change in the awards. You still got the site visit, which is about a point in time on the day, putting your best foot forward. Um, for those categories that, that can do site visits. Then you've got your submission, which you put so much effort into. And of course, it's changed a bit for this year, down to less words, a bit more flexibility in how you respond because of our COVID era that we're working in. And then you've got 20% coming from your consumer, your customer voice. So I think that's really nice balance in terms of the areas that are assessed. 
Um, and on the QTIC website, you'll find a guide to Review Pro, um, which will provide you with further information about, about Review Pro and how to set up your free account via the awards portal. So online.qualitytourismaustralia.com. And that brings us uh, to the end of this webinar. I would very much like to thank you, Avril, for putting your presentation together and for your support of the industry across, across Australia and also in Queensland. Um, we know that you um, reside in Queensland. We're very lucky to have you locally. And um, we're very grateful for your time today and for explaining Review Pro to us and how it factors into the awards. Thanks, Liz. Thanks for having me. Um, so if your category does incorporate a Review Pro score, please um, don't delay in nominating for the awards and setting up your free Review Pro account. Um, QTIC and the Tourism Awards judges, of which I am another a proud member again this year of the judging panel, um, we look forward to bringing you further webinars to help you along this journey with your award submission because we know that support um, in this process can be really helpful. If you have any suggestions for topics, please forward them to the email awards at qtick.com.au and the team at QTIC would love to incorporate your feedback and your requests. The next webinar, which is being scheduled presently, will be um, specific to first time entrants. And that's really important if um, you haven't entered the awards before to be aware of the tips that are really directed to yourself because it is a journey and a learning process. You get so familiar with it after the first time, but it's really helpful to have some, some tips for the first time round. Should you have any questions about today's webinar or generally about um, the program, please check the QTIC website um, or contact the program manager who is the lovely Tracy Capes at awards at qtic.com.au or you can give Tracy a call on 3236 1445. So that's a wrap for this second webinar in the series. I look forward to seeing you again soon and um, supporting you on this journey that you're on. Thank you.